Hi everyone. Welcome to the podcast Chords. I am Sanjam Sarsteva. You are listening to the podcast which is here to inspire you. So for today's podcast we have with us Gineev Nagi. She is an expert in creating stories for brands and is a brand and content strategist. She has a demonstrated history of work in marketing and advertisement companies like PepsiCo, Tuberg and Amazon India. and has a diverse portfolio that ranges on multiple large corporations she believes that the success of a brand lies in core understanding of creating a profound brand voice aside from work gineev is a fitness enthusiast and has a passion for art and culture with this we would like to welcome gineev on the podcast hi gineev how are you doing hi sanjam thank you so much for the kind words and the warm welcome i'm doing well how about you i am doing great dear you have done so much of good work and your work has inspired us and we are so grateful to have you on the podcast and the listeners would learn so much that how stories and culture formation helps in creating brand identities so with that should we move to the question number 1 for the same yeah absolutely thank you so much sanjam for making me a part of your platform and it's great to be a part of this i love uh, of course try and impart as much as i can and uh, lend whatever advice i can to your uh, audiences and uh, yeah looking forward to our conversation through this yeah that's awesome all right so uh, to the audience i would like to inform that gneev has a diverse education background which is about choosing history in undergrad and moving to the design space so first question revolves around your education background So when you have taken that route when did you decide to that you wanted to enter into marketing and branding and communication strategy for the brands did your education background contribute to propelling your career in that domain great that's a, that's a great question to start with so yes i've i've had a background which has been fairly diverse um coming as a commerce student from school i opted for history and i did that from uh, hansraj shahri university with no intention intention uh, to actually study history but i actually did that which i realized was quite exciting and it was completely mm-hmm. cut for me because i inherently had a passion for reading about culture understanding stories people humans in general how they work and history was all about that so i actually enjoyed my study there and uh, moving on i went on to doing uh, my other passion point which is design i always wanted i always knew i had a flair for doing something creative and so i just wanted to try my hands and with luck i got accepted into uh, nif new delhi and right. i pursued uh, the master of design from there i again was not sure was i what i was stepping into but i still gave it a try uh, coming from history you know it wasn't the the normal path that anybody would take you know usually you would exactly imagine somebody you know going into law or ias or you know maybe something a little more serious and i'm not saying design is frivolous but uh, design was something that i always wanted to do i didn't pursue that in my ug so i thought i'd give it a try in my pg right <laughs> Honestly when I entered the uh, design uh from the course that I did which was the master of design space it actually changed a lot of my understanding about the design world uh I was coming from a background where I looked into design as purely aesthetic in an aesthetic form and uh, the course actually completely changed a lot of things for me and it was more than that is what I was being taught it was pretty much everything but maybe aesthetics at some point that was probably <laughs> like the outcome of you know the final product um right so the process of design was exciting to learn and from there in my two years of studying i realized that i had a passion for communications uh and somehow uh, in my tenure i was always made to be the leader you know to take on more communications for either my batch or you know for the course in general and that's how i realized i wanted to get into uh, marketing and communications and design strategies for brands and branding was something that was my passion point while i was studying i also took on a freelance opportunity with a creative branding agency it was called creative marketing fix 
and I was uh, working there as a junior content writer. So that was my first corporate experience. And I, and now that I look back, I'm glad I did that because it really added on to me understanding where my passion lies. And uh, yes, I think one thing just led to another. I never really planned it. Honestly, it wasn't a planned okay. move. But I think when I look back, everything stitches together pretty perfectly. Yeah, so that's that's really that's interesting that you so have diverse. Taken, you've taken the pieces from different domains and made a perfect outcome of that. That history plus uh, commerce plus design, and now you're creating design stories from that. Absolutely. You mentioned something about aesthetics of design. The audience would love to know what is aesthetics and how aesthetics were different and how design was different. Right. So I think before understanding the concepts of design and design strategies or even, you know, branding for that matter, my understanding of aesthetics was just that it should look beautiful. Even if it doesn't have a story, even even if it doesn't have a process, the outcome should be beautiful. Mm -hmm. In the course, what I realized was, yes, aesthetics is important, but it's not everything. Exactly. Everything that you do has to have meaning behind it, has to have research behind it. And because my module and my course was just research oriented, that's what I used to my advantage. I realized that every little thing that you do has to have meaning behind it, be it right. brands, be it product, be it, be it anything in the world. You know, it could be it could be something beautiful to look at. And that's great. But if you don't have a story behind it that you can, you know, really tell your audiences, the product or the service just doesn't become compelling enough. And right. that's why I started focusing on the backstory and what is the meaning. And I started finding the meaning in everything because being a content writer also, I was propelled into looking out for more research points for brands. And even, and I worked very closely with the design creative team to come out with more branding guidelines and conceptualize designs with them. But I realized that everything started from creating a story. That was the first point. Yeah, that's an essential point for every designer who are looking forward for any creative problem solving that coming from a story background, that you have a story that you're forming in your mind and then you're creating a design. That brings essential part for the users to understand. Is that the right conveying message, Gneef? Absolutely, absolutely. I think... Design thinking is what we learned, if, if I were to term the phrase, it has a very, very strategic process to it, to it. And if you follow the process, you reach the final outcome. And then the final outcome is where aesthetics would apply. So yeah. everything that goes in the back end is actually the core of uh, core design. The, yeah, the core design. So design it's is absolutely. So design is right. not just what you see, it is everything that goes behind it. And, and right. that's my specialty. So it is research plus the aesthetics that brings the design and story formation or storytelling is a part of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. And, you know, if, if you look at it, if I were to give you an example, you could be a beautiful human being, you know, to look at, but it's really what matters in the heart. You know, it's really your core personality that, you know, defines who you are. And that's, that's exactly what it is for any kind of product or service. We're all looking out for meanings. Now, even more so with COVID, everybody wants to invest in more uh, products and services or, you know, brands which are giving them more meaning than, you know, just, just giving them a brand value or aesthetic value. So now I think our audiences are also becoming more and more conscious of what they're really looking at in brands. And I think the whole world in general is becoming smarter. Right. So brand value is all about creating it with a good story creating the way it connects with people. It is not just how it is on the face value. It is how, what is the story that is coming from that uh, brand. It is just like human touch, just like you mentioned that how a human is, what kind of person a human is, so is a brand. Absolutely. The story of a human is very important. Uh, the one who understands the story of any person can build a good relationship with that person. Similarly, is the story of a brand then humans or the end consumers can build a good relationship with that product. Absolutely. And, yeah, Gini, we move to the next question, which is, uh, how does it help in your work, the storytelling? How has it worked for you? And what does the audience uh, derive from your work that what is storytelling and how have you used it in your work? I think um, it's been a part and part. So with a background in design and history, as like I mentioned, I started my career 
as a junior content writer uh, in a creative marketing agency, uh, which actually brought in the core understanding of creating a brand voice and the fundamental role it plays in conceptualizing target specific strategy in the entire marketing exercise. Now, when I mentioned target specific strategy, you mentioned everything that you do is for an end consumer. Who is that end consumer? What does that end consumer like? What are the passion points? What are the demographics? What are the interest levels? If you're not having the right kind of brand voice, reaching out to that specific target audience that you've defined for yourself, everything else will just remain futile in your exercise. It'll just be useless. Because Mm -hmm. if your target audiences, say, for example, get interested with uh, looking at uh, reading more about your stories and vis-a-vis you're actually showing them something which is highly stylized and, you know, something which, you know, is beautiful and is gorgeous and, you know, you're giving them something which is a complete disconnect from what they want. You're actually not creating a good marketing strategy. So everything starts from content management. So uh, creating a brand voice is something that I realized was fundamental. And each brand has its own story. It's just like Mm -hmm. how we are as human beings. Every person is different. And so is every brand. Every brand will will have its own uh, USP. It'll It'll have its own positives. It'll have its own negatives. Uh, it's just like a person. You have to look at it mm-hmm. as a person and just sort of see how you want to, you know, sort of endorse that. And uh, going forward, just curating that thought into a practical approach is what just became my passion point gradually. And I think my background in history sort of propelled that a little bit as history taught me and added a skill of creating critical reasoning and understanding the trajectories of situations. It sort of helped me understand culture and so on and so forth. So storytelling is something that I think I inherently picked up as I was giving my exams for history, which I dreaded. Uh-huh. But now I realized how <laughs> useful they were. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, writing all those debates actually ended up helping me in my career. Uh, so I'm grateful I did that. So yes, that's, that's pretty much what I'm passionate about. I find stories and experiences and people, places, what drives them to really purchase. Um, I take interest in making a brand sound more humane because ultimately you have to understand that each brand is talking to somebody, which is not a robot, mm-hmm. but a human at the end of it. Right. Uh, so while on the job experience has awarded me, me with, you know, uh, building a good diverse skill set. I like working with different diverse teams. So I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to work with numerous kinds of people in different domains. Uh, And it's all been very, very rewarding because you understand how different teams work. And I actually pushed myself to keep doing that because I wanted to give myself that experience to actually understand how different people work in their own domain. So say, for example, a photographer would work very differently from, say, somebody who is a video production manager or somebody who works as an accountant so, or somebody who works as a men's designer. So I think working with multiple people just gave me an understanding of how uh, different groups work together and how cross-functionally they come together to creating a brand, what it really is. So yeah, that's, that's another passion point that I took forward. Mm-hmm. And otherwise, I just feel like stories have always been a way to communicate. I'm a communication specialist. Before people even learned how to write, they would tell each other stories uh, you know, in one way or the other. So yeah. <laughs> designers use storytelling to get insight into users and in building empathy. With COVID times, I think all of us have realized how empathy is so important. So and true. That is very nice. And empathy is the only thing that is driving each brand to, you know, even reaching the person that they want to, because now people just want to invest in something that's giving them meaning. And if if you're not resonating to uh, what they want to hear or what they want to discuss uh, or or what they feel interested about, then it's no point. And really reaching them emotionally. It all sounds really funny because, you know, at one point, at, at one side, I say that I'm a corporate uh, marketing professional, but I'm talking about emotional triggers. But 
at the end of it everything is very connected and emotional triggers actually find, form the core of any marketing strategy even more so now you can't just be hard selling you have to understand where your consumer is coming from you have to understand the macro environment the trends of the world and and then formulate something which will be meaningful hmm. so while designers create personas to represent target users to reflect their user journeys and problems in my world i see like there's no difference between a brand strategist and a designer the roles are overlapping Uh, so i'll say that we have a brainstorming session that brings both the cords into together and forms a session which creates kind of a trend out of it and creates an impactful strategy that is then visible to the audience absolutely absolutely right so it's a kind of a collage that is not visible much to the end customers that who has worked on strategy and who is doing the design but it is a combined effort of the entire team absolutely and that's what drives me to work is uh, just working with different teams and diverse teams and even currently i work on three different projects and i have such diverse teams that i work with people coming from all over uh with different ideas and it's all exciting to factor in as we create something holistic for a brand create a font that we're creating or you know a small social that's media points. strategy so everybody's yes. thoughts are being pitched in so yes yes it's by the end of it it's it's teamwork i believe that's a beautiful note here so here we have another question gini the question says that since we have talked about creating a good work field or creating a good world around us so during this time we have so much of challenges in the society what do you think is the right approach to look forward to and uh, to the readers or to the listeners uh, today with us what do you suggest any online tool or reading platform from your end to understand it more or keep it more engaged for them i think in covid time whatever we had predicted for the next decade actually started happening very very rapidly in the last year and everything has gone digital completely the the use of social media just rose to another level altogether uh and pretty much everybody were on their uh, phones reading the reading the news 24/7 and and while i think that uh, a lot of the people are more aware of what's happening in the world around them because of the virus and the pandemic uh i do understand that in my personal life there is in one source that i look into there is a vast repository of sources that i look to understand trends as a whole of course uh the first is to understand the macro trend uh what's happening in the world at large what is the sentiment at this point of course it's you know from fear it turned into just accepting the fact that we're living in a pandemic to now you know the hope is coming back to start again in a new world things have changed in the last one year how businesses have evolved people have pivoted so i've really just used my personal let network of people who i've worked with in different fields to understand what's really happening uh practically in their lives and of course i then use my own personal repository i look into anything and everything so i read the new yorker uh homegrown is one digital site which is in india swaddle is another uh wgsn of course is uh, a global platform which uh complete keeps coming up with white papers on trends right uh, so i like to read a mix of socio cultural economic political articles to really understand what's happening in different cultural landscapes i moved in canada a year ago i really used this time in this last one year to understand the canadian landscape coming from india where i worked for several years things happened very differently people worked very differently the culture was very different and now here in canada things are super different so it's really understanding how different cultures react to the same problem like the pandemic is the same for everybody but the way it will be tackled in one country is very different from another and how does it impact the socio economic situations of one over the other so all of these things of course is what interest me and i and i end up reading about all these little things and that's what i use in my work as well coming up with more compelling content to see that okay this is the sentiment of this region and this is how we should you know maybe strategize and work towards creating something more meaningful for them 
And then again, uh, for a purely marketing point of view, it totally depends on the domain I'm working on at that particular point. So say, for example, I'm working on a fashion client. So then I'll start looking up items which will be more relevant to them in the fashion domain. I'll start looking up their competition and what they are doing or, or their target audiences. How are they reacting? Currently, I'm working with uh, healthcare. So uh, I'm reading every, everything that I can on healthcare and uh, what is the sentiment in healthcare? How are people reacting to it? Right. So when it comes to marketing, I think there's a bunch of things that I read on the domain. And then, of course, uh, tactfully also read on what are the new marketing tools that have come out that can help or that can aid my strategies. So I also keep reading about platform specific strategies like on social media or, you know, some marketing tools, automation tools that have come out. What is this new thing that we can, you know, introduce into a particular client or a particular brand that will leverage them. So um, the research is varied, honestly. Uh, and it, it it's really on you and your interest levels, I think I would, I would say. I don't think you should confine yourself to reading one particular thing. It's really about being aware of everything around you and then using that knowledge in your workspace. Okay, that's great. Awesome. So uh, any final notes that you have from your end? I think we've pretty much covered everything, Sanjam, <laughs> that you yeah. could have. And uh, yes. I think I'd finish with just one question to you. Right. Uh, we talk about brands in today's world. And this is something right. that I'm always interested in asking people. How do you right. perceive a brand to be? What are your lookouts when you look out for a brand? You know, be it something that you want to purchase or be it something that you want to become a patron of. What are your few okay. touch points that you look at? That's a very interesting question, Gini. So uh, previously, I grew up in a town where I never had any brand needs also, like what is a brand or anything. I never purchased my first brand. I, I was when I entered my college, I took my first branded shirt then. So I was not sure what is a brand all about. And when I entered into Infosys and into working into multinationals, I understood what is the recognition of a working in a brand and carrying yourself with a branded value. Mm -hmm. Then I started understanding that brands carry very subtle language of giving a communication. Uh, and with that, I started understanding market and coming from a background of NIFT, I started understanding brands more. Mm -hmm. And with that, I understood, I like Zara, one of the best brand I've always looked upon to their quality. I like Parada for mm -hmm. their quality of designs that they uh, showcase. But these are fashion brands. For me, the brand that I really love are homegrown brands, which give value to people. Mm -hmm. For example, any SAG, which is giving livelihood to people, those are brands for me. Right. Uh, all those brands which brings value to people's life are the brands for me. There are not much names available to mention. But I feel that what brings more life to people's life is a brand. Absolutely. I think you put it very, very aptly. And this is exactly what I was looking for. While you mentioned some high fashion luxury brands, I think brands are anything and everything that bring value to people. And that's really right. not the luxury. This, I also got one example that I have Gucci's bag, but the bag I carry, which a woman had made it for me from their hand and at Mm -hmm. purchase it from her to give her a livelihood Absolutely. that is a that's brand beautiful. value of her and that's a brand value that I carry I carry that small purse with me more valuably than the brands I carry absolutely and I think uh, this is this is a great way so like you mentioned you know you've become more conscious about what you're purchasing and you know your purchase intentions you really want to invest in where the product is coming from. I think the, the consumer intent has sort of shifted in the same manner. And uh, it's exciting to be in a world where we're actually investing and purchasing items that is going to enhance our lifestyle and not just, you know, be a part of it because of some status uh, value, which is, which is great. And brand is anything that's sort of adding value to the person who's created it, so on and so forth. And this is what makes a brand what it is, the success. 
<laughs> that's super amazing so with that successful note we'd like to conclude our podcast thank you so much kini for the such insightful talk and i'm sure that users or the listeners would love to listen your story and would connect with you furthermore thank you so much sanjam for having this chat with me uh there was so much in there that uh, i hope i was able to articulate everything yeah uh, you perfect way did. that i could <laughs> but yes thank you so much for having this chat with me and i enjoyed thoroughly awesome that's super amazing thank you vinif thank you stay tuned with the podcast and we launch every monday a new story to keep you inspired happy listening podcast cords